Mr. Terminal here and in this video we are looking into deploying secure FTP server on Windows 29. There is a link provided for the marketplace of 2019 version, this one as well as 2016 version. Please look into that. So we are going to head with the creating the instance. The deployment manager will do that. Let's launch it. Select. Yep. Default one is okay. Again, the default one is fine. Networking, no need to test that, and they allow traffic from the ports that we have to configure manually, but we don't have to since it's a deployment. And just click go ahead with deployment manager, deploy, and it should start deploy. This can take a while, so let me resume when it's done. Perfect, our deployment is complete and we can go to the compute instance. We have our external IP, copy that, we would need that. And yeah, let's, let's go inside it. set windows password yeah we can go with that set windows password set windows password set the username first you should get your windows password copy it and save it anywhere you want safe because you will have to use it every time you want to connect through rgp we are going to connect download the rdp file open the file connect here instead of what you entered you want to go with The username and the password that you just copied. Same one. And uh, okay. Yes. And Windows will start. Perfect. Once it starts, you will see the Firezilla server on the desktop. That's where we're gonna go. Let it boot properly so it doesn't hang. Yeah. Just close this and yeah. Our file the server has started. We, as you can see, we are already connected, so we don't have to worry about connecting and here connection here. So, in case you're not, it's directly in file and connect to server, and you can enter in server IP, which is, in this case might be localhost or whatever the case is, and you can will be connected. Once you're connected and if you're experiencing some issues, you it's because we still haven't done some configuration, you might see some connection and NAT errors. So for that, we're going to go for passive mode settings. We want to go to edit and settings here in passive mode settings. Make sure the use custom range port range is checked and it's between 50,000 to 51,000. That's the one. And copy the public IP address, right? So in passive mode, instead of default, you want to go to use the public following IP. And this is the public IP of your VM instance. So I'm going to quickly copy that here. So I copy it. Basically, you cannot copy into the RDP. So you type it out. And that's it. And your Passive mode settings are complete. Press OK. 
Next, what we want to do is create a certificate for TLS, FTP over TLS. And again, we are going to go to settings and in SSL settings slash TLS settings, we are going to enable it first and force protp to encrypt file transfers, enable that as well. And instead of providing it, we can generate a new certificate. And yeah, 1024 bit is perfect. Let me just go with any country code and you can enter the info of your company and whatever. But I'm just going for demo here. So this is perfectly fine. Now in common name, server address, you want to keep the public IP again. So let me type it out again. Perfect. And save this file somewhere, save the certificate somewhere. I'm just going for desktop and save it and generate the certificate. Our certificate has generated successfully. Perfect. And okay. And okay. That's how you configure this. The certificate. Now, when you want to configure users, there are two options. Lo you can create a local user and assign access or integrate your Active Directory and allow users to use the domain local to authenticate. Let's see first about the local users and assign them access. Here, you basically go to edit and users. In shared folders, you can just add a user. Let's go with Tom. And to Tom, you can, yeah, that's what's asking you to do, give him directory. Okay, you are allowed this and you're allowed desktop as well. And let's call her Diana. And to this user, I want to give access to documents and I want to give access to music. Of course, it's just demo. And they sh each should have home directory. That's the recommendation. They should land somewhere. And that's how you manually give them access. As far as Active Directory is concerned, what you want to do is enable, you have to make sure your TLS and SSL is enabled that we just did. Uh, First, go to settings and my bad. We are going to make sure our LDAP is enabled. Go to settings, LDAP. Here you want to enable LDAP support beta server, whatever it is, whatever your server is. Port is obviously fixed unless you changed it. Port is going to be 389 and domain is whatever your domain is, your domain.com, whatever it is. Of course, enable the TLS and SSL certificate, which we just created, right? And okay, in here you can, of course, that's not valid, but uh, once it's done, you can go to users and in general, you can enable account, of course. Make sure this is checked. And here, make sure LDAP is checked. That's the one you want to be looking for. And let me, these users have to be enabled for LDAP. Voila. Allow them to active directly. And that's it. That's how easy it is. Press OK. And those are the most basic settings. And that's what I'm going to cover in this video. One more thing I want to point out in GCP is the firewall rules. Oh, it's great. It's here. Uh, in the firewall rules, if you deploy it through deployment manager, you should not have any problem because it does create all the firewall rules. But let me just go through it in case you're manually deploying and you need it, but you're still watching a video. So if you follow what I did, then you don't have to worry about it at all. But if you're doing sidewise somewhere, something else, then you need to make sure port 2121, 30,000 to 31,000, 990 TCP 
is enabled. This, you have to allow ingress to these ports from any IP address. Yeah, that's all I wanted to point out. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.